Welcome to another episode of the Mud Puppets, and big news, of course, Ryan is now a father. That's right, Joel, and I just want to take a moment to reassure our fans that I'm not going to let that change the style of comedy we like to do. You're going to see the same kind of stuff from the Mud Puppets. Yep, that is very reassuring, because today we have uh, you know, very... <laughs> just for a moment, isn't it cute when you're like wiping your baby's nose and he goes all cross-eyed? And it's, uh, it's adorable. Right. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. Go, please, go we ahead. We have a great guest today. Oh, you're trying to get a stroller into your minivan so you can go to the mall and walk him. I don't have a minivan. <laughs> He's just, he just starts crying, and it just touches your heart. Right, right. Uh, but please. So, a great guest today. An old Why do they call mind? them diaper wipes? You don't wipe diapers with them, am I right? <laughs> you wipe his, yeah, his bottom. Yeah, yeah. Not going to change up the style at all, huh? So really, Ryan, the uh, the brand of humor, it can't change. Not going to change. Not going to change. Good. It's going to be the same stuff. Good. But it was a happy occasion, so let's, oh. let's talk a little bit about the birth of your son. Sure. Um, I actually brought a picture. Sure. Um, one of our cameramen wants to get in on that. Hopefully we can see it. Let's take a look here. And uh, This was taken the day of this, the birth? This or? was taken the day of the birth. And you can see a strong family resemblance. How big was this baby? This baby was almost nine pounds. And you know, a lot of people, Joel, are saying you look. You look at this baby. You can see the family resemblance in the face. And uh, um, yeah, you look at that face, and it's just beautiful. It's a thing of beauty. And you know, Joel, I just want to say to you, and I know this might embarrass Joel, but I'm going to do it. This guy, he likes to have this crusty exterior, but he was such a help during the pregnancy and even before and now this is a little embarrassing to talk about but my wife and I had some problems conceiving Joel yeah, I, happens, don't, I don't know if you no know no, no 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 I want people to know Joel knows some stretching techniques for prenatal women but, he would come over he and my wife would go into the bedroom sometimes for hours uh, and work and work and work until they got it done and I know how hard you guys were working in there they didn't want me to hear but I heard the grunts and the groans and sometimes they would be pleading with God to help them oh, out. Okay, right, really. It's, and it's, no, it's nice no. of you to say these and things, Joel, but we've got a lot of things to talk about. I just, just one more thing I want to say about this. When my wife came to me and insisted that we name this baby Joel Jr., I thought that was a little weird at first. But you know what? I am proud. No, I'm proud because of all the help you gave. I want this baby to call you daddy, just, oh, just like my wife often God. does. Well, okay. Okay, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I was, I was able to help. Oh, it, me it too, buddy. Worked. What a pal. It what a pal. Worked out. Um, okay. So we, of course, last month, we had Horror Month. Right, Which yes. has concluded now. It was awesome. We had our Halloween special. Sequel to last year's smash hit. Yeah. This year we had our muddier nightmare. Yeah, and it was a great, great episode, I thought. A lot of great guest stars helped out. Mm-hmm. Made it a, a very fun, very spooky episode. Yeah, so we'd like to encourage everybody to go to our uh, YouTube channel. Check that one out. Yes. Uh, our Muddy Your Nightmare. And you know, our guest today is uh, one Ted Sebastian, old friend of mine and Mud Puppet super fan. Yes, he is. Who actually uh, helped out on last year's Halloween special. He had a cameo. That's right. So when he, uh, we'll have him in here for an interview. Can't and, wait uh, to talk to Teddy. He's a very interesting fellow. Very interesting yeah, fellow. Yeah, we'll ask him about that. We'll see a clip. So, Ryan, I wanted to talk. We've got Thanksgiving coming up, of course. Right, right. And uh, Black Friday. Oh. Day after Thanksgiving. Thought we could do a little point, counterpoint on that. Point, if you'd like to go, uh, go first. I love it. You know what? Black Friday is amazing. I love crowds of angry people. I love getting out in them. I love them pushing and jostling against my body. I like getting into the store and fighting people for really, really insignificant discounts on things I don't need so that I can take them home and enjoy them. Uh -huh. What are your thoughts, Joel? This is, that was your pro Black Friday? Yeah, I'm a big fan. Yeah, I have to say, you certainly are a big fan. That, uh, that can't uh, be denied. It's rude. Well, I'd just like to say I, I completely am against the idea of Black Friday. Um, our holidays have become, especially Christmas, which I'd like to inform people, um, we're in early November. This, this is not 
the Christmas season. Settle down, folks. Black Friday is a sham. It's, it's a capitalistic money grab for the, the, the money grubbers who run the retail business, and I would love to see it uh, completely done away with. It is a mindless horde of, of sheep that run out and, and buy this crap that you don't need. Stay home with your family. Completely un-American, Joel. Completely un-American? Completely un-American. Oh, being fiscally responsible? Yeah. Not wasting money on with crap this, that you don't need? With this economy, need? you can't afford to be fiscally responsible. We need to, people to spend right. money that they don't have. Do you hear yourself? Do you even hear yourself? Yes. Unbelievable. So. Listen. You, um, you really, this is, these are your honest to God thoughts on Black Friday. Yeah, I love it. Well, you know what? I think you're an idiot. Oh, man! Oh! Oh, he got you! He got you, what, man! What? Oh! <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> wow. Oh, he got you! Wow. What, what the hell man, was... Man, I got my money's worth out of that one. What do you mean your money's worth? What was that? Oh, I, I hired Tim as uh, my new hype man. Your hype man? Yeah, that's right. For what? For zinging you, you big... Stay puff, marshmallow man, chrome dome, sob. Oh! Yes. Uh, <laughs> Wait, he, <laughs> he's gonna do this every time you insult me? Hey, I I've got a certain rate that I've paid him, and uh, yeah, he's um, he's pretty good at it as, as it turns out. This is stupid. <laughs> you would think it was stupid because your IQ is about this high. Hey, oh! <laughs> oh, this ain't gonna get old anytime what? soon. It, I this is ridiculous. I think we should put a stop to this right away. Can we get someone in here and get him out of here? No, he's he's our cameraman and our hype man, so I'm, he's he's on the payroll doubly now. One more thing. Come on, it's all right. <sighs> we have got, of course, our mud puppeteer sketch off that is going on right now. That's right. Sketch contest. Yeah, and uh, folks, we're getting tired of writing all these sketches. We want you to do the work for us. Mm -hmm. We want you guys to send in your sketch ideas, and they could be produced by the Mud Puppets, and you could end up in our guest chair here for an interview with us. That's right, and if you want to send us those sketches, you need to send them to our email, themudpuppets at gmail.com, and we're actually going to see the Muppet date that we did about this back in late September, early October. Yes. So we will go to that. When we come back, we'll be sitting down with Mud Puppet super fan Ted Sebastian. Hey, Mud Puppeteers! Ryan and I are back with yet another Mupp date, and it has been some time since we've seen you in this form. It's been a, a long but good summer. We started our cable access show. Yeah. We celebrated our one-year anniversary with our muddy anniversary, and now. We've got a contest we'd like to have for our fans. We're calling it the Mud Puppeteer Sketch-Off. Whoa, what's this all about? Well, we're asking for fans to submit sketch ideas to us. Whoa, so I can write a whole sketch and give to you guys? Whoa, whoa, slow down there, Junior. No, 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 no. What you're going to do is send a sketch idea, something as simple as, for example, Ryan and Joel buy a dog. And um, you should send them in two to three se two to three sentence pitch. Okay. Can it be like a huge costume epic with thousands of dollars of special effects? It's like you're willfully retarded. No. No, it cannot. Um, you guys are familiar with our stuff. You know what we're capable of. Yes, we have a green screen, but we are not industrial light and magic. Hmm. Alright, so where do I send my entry? Ah, that is a good question. You're going to send your entry to our email, themudpuppets at gmail.com with the subject line, Sketch Contest. All right, when do I have to have my entry in? Another good question, kids. We're going to uh, hold this contest until December 1st, okay? So, when the clock strikes midnight on November 30th, take a break from that pornography you're watching. That's when the contest ends. Midnight, November 30th, all submissions have to be in. All right, but can I send more than one entry? Yes, yes you can, but understand only one of those entries will be chosen. All right. One per customer. Okay, tough guy. So what's the payoff to all this? Well, the payoff is this. We're going to pick three runners-up and one grand prize winner. All four of these sketches will be produced and released in January of 2014. 
But the grand prize winner, their sketch will be featured on our cable access show. And if they're willing, they live close enough, they're able to get here, we will actually have the grand prize winner on the show to introduce their sketch and be interviewed by us, the Mud Puppets. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's almost too good to be true. So fans, don't delay. Get those sketches in. Later, defecators. Man, I can't wait to win that contest. <laughs> Brian. Number one. No, no, you can't you can't win the contest. You can't even enter the contest. Why? Because you're one of the mud puppets. You said I could be in the I asked you all these questions and you said yeah. This is for our fans. Oh. You know what? I'm done. I'm done. I'll see you later. Well, this okay? is kind of unfair. I can't take this anymore. <laughs> oh my business is <laughs> Welcome back. So once again, yeah. The sketch off. Send those sketches in. Please. Right now, we are joined by our guest, Mr. Ted Sebastian, a certified mud puppet super fan. Ted, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm very glad to be here, and I think you can easily say I'm a super fan. I've been called your biggest fan by some, which I, I take as an honor. I don't like to credit to uh, many small following, but I mean, not that, that you have a small following whatsoever. Well, we do. It's okay. Some, yeah, super fans. Some have said crazy. But that's all good, right? It's all good. No. Who said crazy? Anyway, you tell me that later. Numerous that people. Uh, they did. Okay, so let's get into a little bit uh, of, of the background here. We've known each other for a long time. Yeah, going have. back to, to high school. Um, and you have some early memories, apparently, of our meeting that uh, you'd like to share? As a matter of fact, I do. Okay, let's hear them. Your class came in thinking they were all tough, and you guys were. You, you did. You did pretty much beat up most of um, my class. It was game but, warfare. Wow. It, it was well earned. I mean, I did pick a bad crowd to hang out with, and I, I earned the uh, the uh, disrespect I received from your crew. Uh, but um, and we, we noticed that. That's why we dished it and out. And you were right. Up a, which one of you was a jet and who was a shark? <laughs> or no, that. It was, that that no, analogy okay. doesn't exactly apply. That's here, all right. right. That's all right. Please go. Dating. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ted. But anyways, uh, yeah, things ironed out in the following years. You know, we ended up um, we ended up clicking it off really, really well. Uh, made sure I had to put one of your good buddies in a nice little DDT headlock and almost smash his face in a gym locker room. But hey, sometimes you need to do that to you know square away loose ends. That's yeah. We ended up hitting it off. Uh, your your junior, my senior, and we did our Christmas uh, Christmas song. Yes, in we writing class. <clears throat> we had um, a creative writing class, and uh, there was five of us in the group. Uh, we had to write a, a Christmas song. We actually went around the school singing it. It was called Chris, Christmas is Heavenly. I don't know if you remember it, but uh, it was a bit of a dark song. I believe uh, you played guitar, correct, Ted? Absolutely. Yeah, we had a lot of fun in that creative uh, writing class. <laughs> Dude, that class was freaking awesome. We had, <laughs> in my, my opinion, the, uh, the best English teacher uh, in the world. She was, she was great. God rest her soul. Yeah, Miss Ackelbach was a, a great teacher and passed away a few years ago. But uh, wonderful teacher and uh, was great with students. Uh, Ted, uh, Ted came in one day and uh, made the entire class comfortable. By uh, He was late, and our, our teacher asked him why he was late. And if you'd care to tell a story, Ted? Well, let's just say my family life at home wasn't too good at the time with my parents, you know, finalizing their divorce a month before my senior year began, and I had a little bit of an argument with my father before class that day, which led to me being late. Um, you, you seem to remember the details a hell of a lot more vividly than <laughs> I do, but uh, I mean, yeah, not only did I, did I like to walk into class and throw my bag against the wall before I took a seat, but you know, Mrs. Ackerbach did question me as why I was late. And I just gingerly explained to her, you know, my father and I had an argument, and I explained to him how I really didn't feel like I needed my life at that time anymore. Well, which I was wrong. I love my dad now, but at the time, that felt the right sure, way. Sure, he was an angry 17, 18-year-old. Who and, hasn't uh, been there, you know. Yeah, we all rage against the machine at some point. Of course. Now, okay, let's get into this. Because um, this, well, this actually feeds in nicely to a later topic. Uh, in high school, um, as, as many youths did across the nation, when the... Uh, the wrestling boom of the late 1990s, the Attitude Era, the Monday Night Wars were in full effect. Of course. We, like many others, were into backyard wrestling. Ted here is, uh, goes by many names. Uh, Victor Severus, uh, Deadly Tedly, Solidus Quadruple X, among others. Ted, tell us a little bit about your time in the RWF. Oh, that was absolutely amazing. I mean, 
I got to make my debut in a casket match uh, where at near the end of the match, the smoke started spewing forth from this great thing. Uh, one of our uh, great wrestlers decided to open up to see what was going on. I came forth from it, choke slammed him to hell, freaking kicked the, I, the chair back in the other guy's face. Um, and that was just the beginning. I got to beat the heck out of Mark Schnabler, Das Oxel, so many times. I got to beat him up and shove him in my trunk and drive off the down the road with him. And then one time in Toronto, I choked him almost to death. And that wasn't even part of the wrestling No, that skin. was not part of the show at all. But it did play, take place outside the United States, so I'm okay. And I don't know if the choke slam was quite to hell. I think it was more to the, to, to the immediate ground. Well, way to ruin my fun. I just wanted to point that out. Way to ruin that. <clears throat> so, of course, Ted helped us out, made a cameo appearance last yes, year did. in our Muddy Nightmare. He played the, the roadside specter, and he played it very well. Very intimidating. Very intimidating. Very intimidating. Uh, we are going to actually go to that clip. We're going to check out Ted's performance for last year's Our Muddy Nightmare. Ridiculous. <laughs> oh, is it the Slender Man? For the love of God, it's not the Slender Man. Roll down the window. Okay. Uh, yes? You boys in trouble? Yeah, the uh, engine died and our phones are dead too. It happens out here a lot. It's a phone you require then. Yes? Do you have one? Indeed, I have a phone. Is that a euphemism? <laughs> Could um, we please use it? You may. You need only to enter my home. That? That's your house? Oh, I don't want to go in there, Joel. He's offering to help us. I'm sure it'll be fine. Hey, where'd he go? Damn, that bastard can move! <laughs> Come on. Unless, of course, you want to stay out here with the Slender Man. Oh. How about a big greasy? All right, so you did a nice job there, there, Ted. We really appreciated your help in that, and you did a great job as the roadside specter. I was honored to be able to make my video debut with the Mud Puppets. As it was already been stated, I'm a super fan. I love your work, and being able to appear in an episode, why well, that just really tickles my fancy. I really hope I can work with you guys in the future. And honestly, I mean, I'm just ever sexy as the roadside specter. <laughs> I, wow! Just putting it out there. I, all right, tickled your fancy. I hope that's all it tickled. You really don't want to know. Plus, the ratings for this show, I don't believe I could go into any more detail than that anyways. I do want to talk about, though, you're, you haven't been a fan of everything we've done. We had a certain Chicken Man Solidus, of course. You weren't too happy with his demise. Yeah, you could say that. Not only did I spend two hours using a virtual private network out of multiple <laughs> countries with my cookies turned off to vote 211 times to set him free, <laughs> well, one of those times I messed up because I didn't know the results changed places and I voted to call the police on him. But yeah, I spent a lot of time to try to get him freed. And then he still saw through the yep. leading heart liberals agenda to set him yep. free and kill him and ate him. Well, Ryan, you'd like yeah. to explain to the fans exactly what we're talking about here. Yes, uh, we had a running you know, series of encounters with a giant chicken man who was attacking Mud Puppet Studios. Mm -hmm. We had captured him. We get left it up to our fans to go online and vote. We could have called the police on him. We could have set him free, as what Ted wanted, or we kill him and eat him. Of course, we killed him and we ate well, him. Well, and kill and eat him was winning by a wide margin. And then the next morning we get up, and it was clear somebody, as Ted has just admitted, hacked the system in an attempt to set the the rooster free. And that wasn't going to happen. So we did kill and eat him, and that's just another video you can you can see on our, our YouTube channel. Yeah. So let's move on. We talked about the backyard wrestling, and you've expressed an interest in becoming a professional wrestler. And of course, in order to do that and be respected, you can't be a backyarder. You've got to get trained, and you're talking about going to uh, Truth Martini School. Absolutely. What, tell us a little bit about that. What has got you interested in? You're actually this is a goal of yours. Absolutely. I, I love professional wrestling as it is. The unofficial. You're right. There's no respect in backyard wrestling whatsoever. I need to actually properly train. So not only do I not hurt myself and not you know injure the other wrestlers that do this. Yep. Um, I'm a big fan of Truth Martini, and I love the independent scene. I love the work you do with uh, Wayne Dutz, uh, the pro wrestling. Um, and PWL, yeah. Very awesome indeed. I love Keith Hybrid. I cheer him on in his corner, even, even if he doesn't want me to. I'm still going to continue to do it too, by the way. <laughs> and uh, I figured the best, uh, best way for me to get into this officially is to, is to train with Truth Martini, uh, hopefully beginning in January. Um, and I, I got a head start. I mean, I can run 
freaking forever now. I, I've, I've done a, quite a bit of training on my own, at least getting myself physically fit between uh, various, uh, you know, actual uh, lifting and um, cardiovascular exercises. Well, there you go. Anybody that's interested in getting trained, Truth Martini runs a wrestling school. You go, uh, on, uh, you can check it out online. The Hot Wrestling School, I believe the website, if I'm correct, is HotWrestlingSchool.com. So, all right, Ted. Uh, last thing we want to talk to you about. A um, couple minutes left here. You recently, last spring, you joined the Army National Guard. That's right. Um, tell us a little bit about that experience. Well, it was great. I mean. I signed an eight-year contract to the state of Michigan. We got lovely weather, multiple nuclear power plants. Um, we got a lot of great lakes, which be a prime target for all our enemies. Uh, and here I am uh, stuck for eight years to defend this wonderful land. But you know, I love the people, the mud puppets included, and a lot of other people, uh, my family, my church family, a lot of friends. Uh, um, and I can serve my country, I can help out, and uh, I'm committed to this. This is what I want. And my training, oh, wow, that, that, that was quite amazing. Uh, yeah, basic training was about four weeks longer than it was originally supposed to be. At a, yeah, a stint in the hospital. Yeah, medical issue where I almost lost my freaking hand. But the Army took care of me painfully but awesomely um, and uh, got me back. And sure, it was only supposed to set me back five days. I ended up taking four weeks. But all that extra training, i become stronger than ever, ready to, for anything that may come my way in life and serve my country, doing independent wrestling, destroying the mud puppets as my character, Solid Squad, Drupal X, or anything else that I may choose to do. Um, so, so the, the basic training next week, that, 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 that's great. And I moved on to AIT in, in uh, Fort Sill, Oklahoma, which is another uh, nice, wonderful, terrible, dusty, hot state where I, uh, I became an artillery person. I'm a 13 Delta. Uh, I, I fired the big cannons and I trained accordingly to, you know, kick the butt of the enemies of the United States of America. We don't know. We, we freaking destroy them. But friend of the mud puppets. Absolutely, friend of the mouth, oh, okay. as long as you don't keep killing off my rooster friends. That's what's important. I can guarantee, after hearing all that, we will never kill nope. another chicken. Guess what? He's back. He's back. <laughs> He's Ted. okay. He's alive. Oh, I love, he is risen I love and all is roosters. Good. Just kidding. We we did have to send him back to uh, chicken hell at the end of our, our muddier nightmare. Which I love, too. I, I, I just want to say. No, I, I loved that episode. Well, I hate, I hate to cut it short, but we, we are running tight on time. Ted, thank you for being here. Very animated. Good luck in all your endeavors. Folks, we are going to see another sketch. We'll come back, wrap things up. Hey, now, look out now. Ah, oh, Don, come on in, take a seat. Oh, no problem. Anything for the best executive in the radio business. Don, you know we're usually thrilled with your voiceovers. The, the commercials you do are generally terrific. Why, thank you, kind sir. Yeah, but... We've got a problem with these Mexican border tourism spots. A problem? Yeah, let's um let's listen to the spot you did for the eight o'clock hour. Why visit Mexico? Beautiful white sand beaches, dozens of natural wonders, live donkey shows, incredible museums. I don't see the problem. Don, you mentioned live donkey shows. Yes. That's not in the copy the client sent over. It's not in the copy we approved you to read. I'm sorry. I made a mistake and I do apologize. Listen, before you make any apologies, let's listen to the ad you did for the 9 o'clock hour. Visit Mexico today. Beaches. Donkey shows. Culture. Donkey shows. Spacious resorts. Donkey shows. All that? and donkey shows. You see, I can explain. What happened there no, was... No, no, Don. Wait. Before you try and explain this, I want to listen to the spot you did for the 10 o'clock hour. Visit Mexico. Come to a donkey show and see young, barely legal girls ravaged by throbbing 14-inch don- For crying out loud! You cut off the best part! Don! I'm sorry, this is unacceptable. I I'm gonna have to let you go. Mr. Shoemaker. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Mildred. We've um, just heard from the Mexican Board of Tourism. Oh? It, uh, it seems that tourism is up 200% since your spot started airing. So, I'm not fired? 
Fired? How about a promotion? Oh, that sounds as wonderful as a Christmas Eve donkey show. This ad has been approved by the Mexican Board of Tourism. Olé! Visit Mexico, donkey show capital of the world! Wanna get muddy? Visit mudpuppets.com today! As always, fans, we want to welcome you to check out our website, mudpuppets.com. Email us, again, your sketch ideas. And if you even want to share a, a crazy Thanksgiving memory, everyone's got crazy Thanksgiving memories. I know we do. <laughs> Thanksgiving 05. Ooh. Who can forget? Yep, send it right there, mudpuppets.com, or email us at themudpuppets at gmail. We also, of course, are on Facebook. You can friend us or become a fan. On YouTube, we can be found at The Mud Puppets. That's where all of our videos are at. And we also have a blog that we write on occasionally on uh, WordPress. Right. And last but not least, of course, you can always follow us on Twitter. We will follow you back at Mud Puppet Ryan, at Mud Puppet Joel. And you can check out our latest sketches on, on YouTube, of course. Uh, just released uh, recently, Bad Job Interviews, Volume 2, as well as all of our Horror Month sketches. Yes. Now, Ryan, Thanksgiving coming up. Love it. What are you thankful for? You know what? Cranberries, stuffing, turkey. Okay, okay, let's just cut this off right now. Because it's clearly just going to be a smorgasbord of food. No, there's something else I'm thankful for. What? Joe. Joe who? Joe Mama. Oh! What? <laughs> yeah! Hey, how is it going, Tim? You're my hype man! <laughs> oh, not anymore. I doubled your price. Four dollars, Tim. It's coming your way as yeah. soon as I get Great. paid. Way to be a Seriously. sellout, Tim. Way to be a sellout. Good job, Tim. Well, we'll see you guys next month. We'll be celebrating Christmas. Great. We'll see what we have for you then. Bye, folks. Tim, I can't believe you. This is such nonsense. I'm not really going to give that four dollars. See? He's a shyster. It was a mud puppet show.